Jean Belong, go. Hello, dear. Watch where you walk. And put mud all over that floor. But I'm not putting mud all over the floor. I'll just clean that floor. You think all I've got to do is to clean the floor so that you can come in and put mud all over them? You're mistaken. But I ain't putting no mud on your floor. Well, don't. I've got more to do than clean floors so that you can come in and walk mud all over them. But I ain't putting no mud on your floor. Show me. Go on. Where's the mud I put there? I don't know why I bother. Spend all day cleaning just so that you can come in and drag mud all over the floor again. Oh, I ain't dragged no mud in. I mean, there's a there's a scraper out the front there to get the mud off your boots. But no, it's too much trouble to use that, I suppose. I don't need to look. You'd sooner drag it in all over the floor. And what you want, anyway? Nothing. And what you doing in here, then? I live here, don't I? What's the matter? Brewers on strike? Look. I'll come back to see you, dear. Yeah, well, you've wasted your time because I've got no money to lend you. I'll come back to see you. If you like, I'll come out and have a drink with me. What's the catch? There's no catch. I just thought maybe you and me like I'll come out and have a drink with me. That's all. Where is me? Making the beds. She ain't making our bed, is she? Yes. Oh, I've asked you not to let her make our bed. God, blimey, the way she makes it's like climbing a straitjacket. Well, you don't like it, you do it yourself. Now, come on, move out the oh. way. I've got work to do. Well, look, leave the work. It won't matter for a while. Come out and have a drink with me. I've already told you I've got no money to lend you. Look, why is it every time I ask you to come out with me, you always seem to think there's some sort of ulterior motive? Well, there usually is. I'm your husband, and I... Yes, you are. And in all the 45 years I've been married to you, I can count on the fingers of one hand the times you have sought my company. Blimey, well, there's no pleasing you, is there? Maybe I mean, I've done the beds. Yours won't need making for another week. Oh, Hello, you. Mr. Garnet. You're home early. Pubs ain't shut yet, are they? Look, I come back to ask you and her uh, if you like to come out and have a drink with me. Ooh. That'd be nice, but I must warn you I ain't got no money to lend you. Oh, God. I've got me bloody home. <laughs> oh, it's all right. I'm only teasing. Come on, breath of fresh air. Leave the work. There's always work to do. No, I'm not walking all the way up the pub. It's too far. Oh, but that's the point, isn't it? You won't have to walk my door, will you? Because I've got transport outside, do not I? Transport? What transport? <laughs> Why do you think I'm wearing this? Because you're stupid. You ain't got a job as a dustman, have you? No, I ain't. Come on outside, I'll show you. Come on. Sit out here. What is it? You'll see. Come on, Mr. Garnet. 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 You keep on about our little money we got. Now we've got to keep on economising. You go buy a thing like that. But it's only 50 quid. God blimey, that's an investment, that is. It's all our transport problems solved at a stroke. Don't do 60 miles to the gallon, that will. 60 miles for one pound 30. God blimey, I mean, we're three of us up. That's cheaper than your trains or your buses. <laughs> 50 pound for that? Well, that's a bargain, 50 quid. It's worth more than that for scrap. I should hope so. Because it is scrap, isn't it? I'll trust you to put the mockers on it. Look! Come on, girl. I'll drive out a pub. No, I'm not getting in that. Not with you driving it. Oh, don't be daft. God, blimey, they're easy to drive them things off. <laughs> Char could drive one. Maybe. Could I have a drive of it, Mr Garnet? No. Now, what are you worried about? I drove it home, didn't I? I can drive that at a pub. Yes, looks easy enough. I mean, it's only a bike, isn't it? It's a bike with an engine, isn't it? And you don't have to balance it, because it's got that other thing, that sidecar. That'll balance it, won't it, Mr Garnet? Be steady as a rock when she gets in it, eh? <laughs> can you ballast her, girl, eh? <laughs> anyway, I drove one of them things during the war. So you say. I did! 
I was the dispatch rider for General Montgomery, wasn't I? You never left Wapping during the war. I was a dispatch rider for Monty in Wapping. He was in the home guard. That's right, home guard. I was guarding Wapping, wasn't I? See, Wapping was highly strategical place during the war. And I was taking messages, well, dispatches really, from Monty's headquarters to all his other generals. What was Monty doing in Wapping? He was fighting his second front in Wapping, wasn't he? I never heard of Monty being in Mopping. Not that Monty. Oh, blimey, they didn't broadcast it, did they? They kept that secret where he was. Anyway, Second Front wasn't in Wapping. Second Front was over the other side somewhere. I know where the Second Front was, my dear. Second Front was in France, eventually. But Monty started it off in Wapping. Well, I would have thought he'd have started it somewhere more like here. So would I. Beside the seaside. He couldn't start it for somewhere like here, could he? Because they ain't got no bloody docks here, have they? Oh. Not near Eastbourne. He needed docks to load up his boats, didn't he? That's why he was down in Wapping. I mean, blimey. We had some of the biggest docks in the world down there in Wapping. Your East India Dock, your Royal Albert, your Victoria Docks. Liverpool Docks. The I mean, that was all docks, wasn't it, down yeah. that side of the road, from Wapping right past Canning Town? Town. Till the bloody Union shut them all down. I mean, there's no other suitable place for Monty to start his second front from except Wapping. Well, it's the first I've heard of it. Ain't me. Yeah, well, they kept it a secret, didn't they? I mean, I couldn't tell you that we were starting our second front in Wapping because I didn't want to worry you. Anyway, all of us said quarter staff swore to secrecy. See, we was all under what was known in them days as your Official Secrets Act. It's more than our lives are worth to tell. I mean, remember what they used to say during the war? Careless talk, cos... Lives be like dead. Keep... Mum. Mum. No, my dear. I couldn't tell you. Not even if I wanted to. And as I say, you'd have only worried. Headquarters staff. I know you was in the home guard for a while. But here you are. Yeah, but you waited until the second front was well on the way and there was no chance of any Germans getting here before you joined it. Look, are you coming for a ride on my bike or ain't you? Mr Carney, do you think I could ride on the pillion? I've always wanted to be a pillion rider. All right, hurry up. Yeah, I suppose I'll have to, but I shan't enjoy it. Get a bloody move on! Bricks! Hurry up, come on! Don't hold me so tight, I can't... Get off! She's the stuck! Bloody hell! What? Never mind! It's not much faster than walking, is it? Not as fast as walking. It's more comfortable, though. It's like sitting down walking, only slower. Turn left here. I can't turn left. Yes, you can. It's a left turn. It may be a left turn, but the bike can only turn right. Bloody steer is on a blink. Watch your arm down. Watch your arm down. Well, that's the way we want to go. Come on! It's a satellite! It's stuck! But if we keep on turning right, we'll end up where we started! Come on! It's going up hill, you see. Steep gradient, this one. Come on! 
actually build this one. own wheels now because you need wheels in a place like this because ain't got the bus service like you've got in Wapping see <laughs> well there's no need of it really because uh, round here you see in your Eastbourne they all got their own private wheels can you give us a ride in it dad yeah later on I would drive up the front if you like I mean if you let me know I could have met you at the station oh well better get back to the old garage give it a look at Check the old recommended tyre pressures there. Have a look at the oil. It's a maintenance, but it takes up the time, you know. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the four days since he bought that bike, he's had all his meals out in that garage. <laughs> Sitting up in the sidecar. <laughs> Don't he ever drive it? Yeah, round and round the block. Drives all the neighbours mad. <laughs> he drives round the pub as one drives back. Then he drives round the pub again as another one. 
drives back. He has to go the long way round because of only turning right. <laughs> he did about 18 miles yesterday and he only went up there three times. <laughs> Where is this pub? It's just over there. You can see it if you look out. <laughs> it, it does the shopping. Never done that before. But on that thing, he's round and round the shops all day. <laughs> Young Michael, what you got in that bag? Come to stay, have you? I know what he's got in there. Won't tell me. I say to him, what you got in there? And he says, nothing. When he goes out, I say to him, where are you going? And he says, nowhere. <laughs> when he comes back, I say to him, what you been doing? And he says, nothing. He goes nowhere when he does nothing. I don't know. What have you got in there? Nothing. Yeah? <laughs> Where'd you get it? Nowhere. <laughs> See? Let's have a look. No. <laughs> why? It's a present for Grandad, that's why. Present for Grandad? From you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the telly since he had that thing. No, he just lives outside in the garage with it. Wonder he doesn't bring it into bed with him. Well, he did go to bed with it one night because I went in there in the morning to bring him a cup of tea and there he was sitting up in the side car with his goggles on, fast asleep. He was all covered up in maps. <laughs> I think what it was, he was trying to work out a good way to get from Eastbourne to West Ham without turning left. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Reet? There's a bit of engineer, all right. <laughs> hey, Granddad. Oh, thanks so much, son. Top. Oh, dear, it's a lot of work. Come on, Michael. Uh, I've got a present for you, Granddad. Present for me? Yeah. You got to shut your eyes. That's a surprise. Yeah, all right. Oh, blimey. All I've got from some people Christmas time, ain't it? No peeping. All right. Well, there you are. Oh, blimey. That's a skid lid. This is what I wanted. Thanks very much, son. You have to have one of these by law, you know. You! Dad said every good Nazi should have one. Granddad? Yeah? Do you think when that prince, right, you know, Charles, when he gets married, he's going to marry someone like her? Like your queen? Of course. Of course he will. That's the old up, isn't it? Try to find someone like her. Well, I don't know, I mean. If I was the Prince of Wales, right, and had all his money, I'd go for someone more like your Rackhill Welsh or your Brit Eklund. You know, someone with a bit of form on them. You. Your royal don't marry for that! Dirty minded little punk. He's only joking! Joking? It's fixed till Charles is gonna marry anyway. Lady Diana Spencer. He'll never marry her. He loves her, it's obvious. Oh, yes, he does, Mr Garnet. It said so in tidbits. Or well, one of them papers. Nice ass they got, though, innit? Is that their passage where they keep their bikes? You can understand why intelligent people not only want their own private wills, but also want their own private schools <sighs> where their children can be taught all the right things to think and to say, things that their parents will pay the money to approve of. So those children can grow up respecting their parents and believing in all the things that their parents believe in and none of this arguing all the time and trying to prove people who are right wrong. More cake, Michael. Yeah. If you'd stop stuffing your face with cake and pay attention, you might learn something. Bloody rainbow nut. Well, your wars don't marry for love. God, blimey, can't imagine young Prince Charles coming home and saying to his mother, Mum, I just met this girl up the Odeon. Can I bring her home for Sunday tea? No. 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 He has to marry Mary. who he's told to marry. marry. He'd have a bit more respect for his parents than to marry someone who they might consider was beneath him. I'll let you consider I did. Oh, I never said that. You've never stopped saying it. Well, it's true, isn't it? You could have done a lot better than marry that ignorant, lazy, good for nothing, scarce git. That's Michael's father you're talking about. Well... And my husband! I am not talking oh. about your husband! I'm talking about Prince Charles. His has to be a marriage of convenience. He could sow his wild oats, so <laughs> he'd be allowed to do that. Probably already done it, if the truth be told, but he's kept his nose clean while he's been doing it, cos there's never been a breath of scandal about that lad. 
Mind about laughing. That ain't been easy for him, is it? With your William Hockey and your Nigel Dempsey and all the other media spying and prying on everything your royal say or do. You see, in the old days, when a King of England went to one of your foreign laws and said, I am prepared to take your daughter and to share my throne with her and let her sit upon my right hand. Because he couldn't turn left. <laughs> it wasn't inferring that he loved her. Oh, no. 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 It was doing a deal, striking a bargain. <laughs> and a bloody hard bargain, it'd be an all. He'd say to her father, he'd say, in return for this honour, I am prepared to bestow upon your daughter and you. I shall want, and then he'd state his terms. He'd say, I shall want this and that and the other. Especially the other. Doing that way, he wouldn't have to go to war with them. I don't care what you say, Dad. I bet Prince Charles marries Lady Diana Spencer. And I'll bet you he don't. I bet she does. Make me head all wet now. I bet you he don't. I bet you he does. Come on, Mike. Here. If you're going to take to the station, you better leave now, just in case. Just in case what? Look, my fish is going potty in her old age, that one. So long, Anne. Anyway, I'll bet you she don't. Bet she does. I'll bet you she don't. I bet you she don't. Oh, it's cold on this. Here, Uncle. Have a swing of this. No, thanks. Keep you warm. You shouldn't drink that while you're driving. But don't you start nagging. The taxi train, all right? No, we didn't. We got stopped by the police and he got breathalyzed. Oh. He's only had that bike a week and he's lost his licence already. Oh, aye. That's where you're mistaken, my dear, ain't it? So I never had a bloody licence, did I? 